Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're looking at this 2021 Nissan Sentra with a 2.0 liter engine in it. This is the SV model. I'm going to be showing you the emissions locations on this vehicle. You'll find all of the components listed on your vehicle or on your vehicle listed on this label right here. This is the under hood label. You'll find a lot of useful information about your vehicle on this label, but we're going to be focusing on the emissions components listed. So three-way catalytic converter. It says you have two of them. You actually have one that is monitored by the, by the computer and another one that is not. So if you have a cat code, only one really should need to be replaced. This is a heated oxygen sensor. This will be the bank one sensor two or the rear oxygen sensor on this vehicle. This one monitors the catalytic converter. Next listed is the wide range heated oxygen sensor. This is your bank one sensor one oxygen sensor the most important oxygen sensor on the vehicle and it tells the computer how much fuel to give or take away from the computer to give you the best air to fuel ratio. Next is the EGR, exhaust gas recirculation valve. All of these parts are going to be listed in this video as well. So this component right here takes burnt gas from the emissions or from the tailpipe and burns it or brings it back up to the intake so it's burnt through the tailpipe. And this is just the EGR cooler. On the exhaust, you have a little bit of a cooler, so it cools the air going back into the intake through the combustion process, which will give you a better burn process if it cools it down. DFI, direct fuel injection. That just lets you know that there is fuel injection on this vehicle, and each cylinder has a fuel injector. So let's get going on the emissions components locations. I'm gonna show you where everything is at. Hopefully give you a couple little tips and tricks on these components that are listed. Getting started real quick, we are gonna be looking at the EVAP vapor purge solenoid right here on the top of the intake, real easy to get to. I do have videos on replacing this and testing this, so make sure you check out my video library. But your vapor purge solenoid will bring vapors that are built up in the EVAP system and allow them to flow into the intake so they go through the combustion process and hopefully through the catalytic converter and clean up by the time it goes out the tailpipe. Now, right here, we're going to find the positive crankcase ventilation valve or the PCV valve. That hose right there goes to the intake. When the intake applies vacuum to the PCV valve, it will open up and allow gases to flow through that that were built up in the crankcase. So hopefully you don't get any gunk built up inside there that everything air will flow through that PCV valve. Right you can here. see everything comes in the breather into right here. The That's going to be the, the fresh air going in. And then the when your PCV valve, valve opens up, it's going to suck that hopefully fresh air intake, through the engine and the into the intake get sucked and then through the, the combustion process. So it's intake. a pretty simple system, but it is pretty vital. I recommend replacing the PCV valves about every Bank forty to 60,000 miles. It is pretty excessive, but it is a good insurance policy. Right here is your wide range oxygen sensor or the Bank One Sensor One oxygen sensor. This sensor is sir, the most important sensor on the vehicle. Range. It tells the computer how much air or fuel is in the exhaust stream, so it knows how much to give Heated to the computer. You can see right there that arrow is pointing out the connector to the oxygen sensor. Everything on this vehicle, the emission system-wise, is pretty easy to replace, and I should have a lot of videos coming up on replacing everything. Here is the EGR valve. This is your exhaust gas recirculation valve. This allows burnt gases in the exhaust system to come back up into the intake to dilute the combustion process and hopefully give you a little bit better gas mileage. That little red arrow was supposed to be pointing at the tube that was coming from the EGR valve up to the front side of the engine to the intake and allowing those burnt gases to go in there again. Getting under the vehicle after I safely lifted the vehicle using the lifting points, and I'm going to show you another video on where those are at, so make sure you check out the video library so you can find the lifting points, air filters, a bunch of stuff on this vehicle. Right here, Bank 1 Sensor 2 Oxygen Sensor. This oxygen sensor tells the computer how the catalytic converter is operating, and that's pretty much it. So this is your catalytic converter checker oxygen sensor. It's really easy to replace a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter socket will get those off and open in or the actual socket made for the oxygen sensor is really good. Here is the connector. So these, both the oxygen sensors on this vehicle are real easy to replace. That rear oxygen sensor, that would be the one to replace if you think you might have a cat code. Now you can see this catalytic converter right here. This one is not monitored by the computer. Right there, you can see it. And right behind it is a resonator or some type of muffler or something. But this catalytic converter is not checked by the computer. So if you have a cat code, 
Replacing that one really won't do you much good <coughs> on getting the tech engine light to go away. Now coming to the passenger rear of the vehicle, there's a lot gonna be going on under here. I'm gonna try to give you a lot of information real quick. So if you're having a problem pumping gas, this might be your issue down here rather than anything up under the hood. Here you're gonna find your vapor canister. That will store the emissions vapors and then allow them to be pushed up into the intake or back into the fuel system uh, as needed. This filter right here, if it gets clogged, will make it really hard to pump gas. So if you're having a gas pumping problem, I would check and make sure that filter right there is all cleaned out. Maybe just disconnect it, that hose from the filter and see if it's easier to pump gas. Next thing would be right here, you're gonna find the vapor vent solenoid. This will allow vapors that are built up in the canister to flow through the black hose, that's I'm gonna point out soon, and it's going to allow it to go through the filter and then the atmosphere to be released. So if this solenoid right here, vapor vent solenoid goes bad, will also cause problems while pumping gas. So this is almost all of the emissions components on this vehicle. If you have any questions, or if you need any help trying to find an issue on your vehicle or you're chasing a code or something like that, make sure you send me a message. You can call me or text me, prefer the text, 925-418-5096. Shoot me a message right here and make sure you check out the video library. I'm going to have a lot of videos coming out on this vehicle, the cabin air filters, spark plugs, a lot of stuff. So make sure you check it out. Maybe one of these videos right here will help you out. Like, subscribe, and share before you go. I will see you on the next hopefully helpful video.